Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. Well, I have another pair of uh, LS heads to do here. And they're 243s. And uh, the guy decided to have me wear these heads and to do some work to them. And uh, he has a certain number that he wants to get out of the car. But I was thinking once again, guys, if somebody was just to get ahead and throw on their vehicle from their friend, like you had LS and you're laying around and you broke a head and you just throw another head on without looking at it, you say, well, it's just the LS head, the one that came off the engines used, so I'm putting another one back on it's the same way. We're going to see what we have here, guys. Now... I'm breaking these down, and what I did, anybody that does something like this, this symbols ahead, got a little bag, I'm putting the retainers and keepers in this little plastic bag. Now, that's a good idea. A better idea would be to have one separate for the keepers and one for the retainers, and then put this in a bigger baggie. But I don't happen to have that right now. And then I talked my son in not to throwing this box away. Because he had it in the trash. And I was like, no, save that for me, please. And he did. And this works out good for keeping the valves in. And then I'll keep that right in there all together with the guy's name. So getting back to this. I always talk about this in my videos of somebody was just to take a head off another vehicle and put it on just the way it is, which we've done in the past. But look what you have here, fellas. I mean, most guys would say, yeah, I clean that up. I would take time and clean that rust off of there, of course, and do all the important stuff to it. But how many guys are going to disassemble the head? So, I had the keepers and retainers off on this one side right here. So, we're going to pop these out. We're going to see what we have here. And I'm going to tell you from experience, it's not going, going to be pretty. And you might say, well, that's not too bad. And it might not be terrible. But if you look close... There's pitting on the seat right here. And if you're just doing a stock truck and you need to get it running for your work, that might not be any big deal. But uh, I just want to show you guys what you're winding up with. Look at the valve. So even if you're not worried about performance, is that good for fuel economy? If you have a work truck and you just say, well, I just need my truck running, Terry, I'm not worried about going 10s or 12s. So, fuel's pretty high right now. So, consider that if you're not worried about performance. And consider this. Which I've seen worse. But it comes down to this. You're throwing something together to get your vehicle back on the road. You're in a hurry. That's understandable. I'm just going to let somebody see in the real world what they're in for. And, of course, how they're gummed up inside. And um, this is... Uh, what really happens in real life. So, even from a performance side of view, aside, a fuel economy would be important. So, the exhaust seat is pretty beat up. If you look close to it, I hope it shows up here, guys. I mean... That's not a good thing. So if anything, 
you're going to be down in horsepower regardless. And uh, that's something to think about. If you have an engine that's already making 300 from the factory, or 350, whatever we're supposed to be making, you don't think that's making that horsepower now, do you? This would be the reason. People say, well, it has miles on it. It's usually not the mileage on the block. Even if you have a leak down, it's mostly here in the heads where you've noticed a difference in performance. Now, all odds together, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying, in most part, a performance lacking is going to be right here. And if you want to take a nice look, they're pretty gummed up. I mean, even though they have a nice port, and they can still breathe. The LS had the advantage. We all know that. But uh, let me flip this over, guys. I did a segment a while back talking about how the people put a certain expectation on an intake runner. And we talk a lot about that. But when you have an intake runner that's all gummed up, well, how good is that? And we talked about that texture finish that people put on. And this might make my point on that. I always said that uh, when you go and spend money on things, you gotta make sure it's helping you. But when you have a head, that's getting all gummed up like this here. If you were to spend money on that texture, golf ball design that people get, some people, how long is that going to stay good on a screen engine? I just thought I'd throw that in there. That's not what this is about, but it just makes me uh, realize when I say things why I say it. So, one head's not going to always be better than the other one. You might take a head off of something that's running and it might be fine. And then you might take a head off and it will be like this. And you might have one that's worse than this. You might have one where the valves are actually seized up to the seat where there's been rust around it. This uh, valve right here didn't even want to move when I took it out. I mean, it moved, but it wasn't. It wasn't going back and forth the way it should. It wasn't bouncing. The exhaust would bounce like it should. But the uh, intake valve was real stiff. So, how much was around that to make that where I couldn't even barely get it out? And I mean, now it's starting to move because I freed it up from moving it back and forth. Now it's getting there. But, uh, I'm just saying how much oil was around the guide inside of this. That's all cropped up. I haven't looked through the guides yet. I haven't checked them out, but you can see through them. So maybe they're not terrible. But these are all things you want to check out, guys. When you rip a head down, you want to check the guides out. You can always put the valve in there and move it back and forth to see if there's any plug in it. So... I thought I'd do this quick video because there's too many people willing to just slap something on to get a vehicle running. And um, like I said, we've all been there. But every time I look at something like this here, this gives me a whole different outlook on things because we've all done the same things back in the day. We have taken heads off of one engine, put it on another. But half the time we've done that, it's come off of the engine out of the junkyard that's been sitting. And uh, I remember back in the day, some of the older guys would take kerosene to the head to loosen things up. And uh, they've had motors that didn't run great, and they would put kerosene through them and let the engine run to loosen things back up. So the old timers had some pretty good ideas when it came just to throwing things together to keep it running but uh 
like I said, this is on a basis of just showing you guys what you're really winding up with. So, I hope this might be helpful to somebody. And uh, one thing I did want to say is that one thing about doing heads, disassembling and cleaning heads, I would think would be everybody's uh, downfall that does heads. This is something I absolutely don't like, disassembling. And uh, I think what I'm going to do, if people start sending me their heads without me having to do disassembly, I think there's going to be a big price difference, probably of $200. And uh, this takes time. And uh, it's just one of them deals that there's no fun in it. It is what it is, and uh, I think that's what I'm going to start doing for guys. There's going to be a $200 savings if you take the heads apart first, and then I get them bare. So that would be a pretty good deal, I would think, for somebody to save 200 bucks. And uh, some guy might say, well, it's not worth it to me. But other guys would say, I'll take that $200 and take the heads apart myself. So, uh, I just thought I'd put that out there. But anyway, guys, I got to get to work on these. And I wanted to just show you guys once again, in the real world, what you might be bolting on. If you just grab a head off another engine, or out of the junkyard. Alright, fellas. Hope this is helpful to somebody. Have a good day, guys, and thank you for checking the segment out. God bless you.